There being no quorum required for the fall town meeting, and the town clerk is present to make record of the proceedings, the chair calls to order the first adjourned session of the 2017 fall town meeting at 7.01 p.m. We're gonna start with one quick announcement from Mr. Kevin Kelly about the storm last night. Mr. Kelly of the Groton Electric Light Department. All right, thank you, Mr. Moderator and uh, ratepayers of Geld. <laughs> I asked for a few minutes tonight to share a little information because at Geld, we, we set the bar pretty high for service and rates. So sometimes that, that's what you come to expect. I'm um, in talking to people today. A lot of people didn't know what happened in Middlesex County. But shortly after midnight last night, Groton was just like the rest of Middlesex County and over 20% of the town was out of power. So the entire line staff was called in and worked all night. But where we're different than the rest of Middlesex County is that by sunrise, fewer than 1% of Groton was out of power, while 20 to 25% of Middlesex County Thank you, and th thank the line crew. At, at six o'clock tonight, I checked an hour ago, over 20% of Middlesex County is still without power, and over 40% of Dunstable is still without power. So I wanted to give you this information just so you guys can understand how things run behind the scenes, because I would specifically like to thank the personnel of the, the highway department, the police department and fire department that worked all night with us last night. We had some electrical burning trees. We had lots of issues. We ne One of the advantages with a municipal light department is we work with the highway department, police, and fire department, and that's one of the reasons we're able to, to give you guys such good service. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have noticed a change in the setup for tonight's meeting. Uh, at the conclusion of last week's session, there were some concerns raised by voters about not being able to read the screen. So I'm able to better uh, take advantage of the size of the screen and increase the size of the presentations. We're gonna give this a test run tonight and see if it works well. So I appreciate the cooperation of the Finance Committee and the Board of Selectmen. And I'd also like to thank the IT department and the town manager's office, uh, as well as Mr. Hamilton from the school department for their hard work in getting this set up today. The last four rows, or the last two rows along the back are reserved for non-voters. Non-voters should be seated in the last two rows. If you wish to address the meeting tonight, please proceed to one of the four micro microphones on the floor. While it is not a requirement, you may, if you wish, give your name and address. If you need to use a lectern, the middle, the middle uh, microphone is available for your use. We have a wireless microphone available tonight. Mrs. Collette uh, is manning the wireless microphone for anyone with mobility issues. You should just uh, get her attention and she'll bring it to you. Please take a moment to silence your electronic devices. This meeting is broadcast live and recorded for future rebroadcast and record keeping purposes. Tonight at check in, all voters received a green card. You will need this in the event of a hand count. Please do not lose it. Please do not also go home with it. Please drop them on the table on your way out. As a reminder, there is a three minute limit in addressing the meeting for voters uh, that was passed at last week's meeting. That does not apply to the primary a proponent and opponent of an article. Mr. Cataldo is our timekeeper. He'll raise the yellow flag at two minutes and the red flag at three. Last session, we completed articles one through eight. I anticipate completing the warrant tonight. Article nine, Mr. Pease. Oh my God, I can't even see. Um, Article 9. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $346,860 from the excess and deficiency fund, free cash, to pay the town of Groton's share for the Groton Dunstable Regional School District's district wide phone system and internet infrastructure replacement project 
and all costs associated and, rel and related thereto in accordance with the regional agreement. Article 9 has been moved and seconded, Mr. Pease. Um, actually, I would like to invite, oh, Luke's not here, Ms. Uh, Ms. Gilbert from the school committee to uh, address this article. Chairman of the school committee, Ms. Gilbert. Thank you. So I wanted to explain a couple different things to the voters tonight. Uh, first and foremost, why fall town meeting versus springtown meeting. So I, in particular, sent out a link with the SurveyMonkey uh, feedback form which asked voters, how would you like to pay for district capital expenses? And if, is there a preference in a funding mechanism? So overwhelmingly, the response was, I want to see these to vote on at fall town meeting and springtown meeting, and I want an opportunity to use free cash. So here we are. That's one of the reasons. Um, this particular item was chosen out of all the different um, district capital funds that are coming up for FY19 budget. The reason being is it was the largest expense and it has um, addresses academic and safety issues for our district. In regards to only putting the one article, uh, the district is very um, in tuned in regards to other possible needs that exist in our town. And we all know that there's only X amount of dollars to be spent within our town. So out of respect for those other needs, we kept the limit to this one item as we had no idea how much money and free cash was going to be certified. The warrant articles was due prior to that. So the second portion of information I want to provide is what is the return for your investment? Um, the updated phone system will allow our district to have things we don't currently have. We don't have the ability to have caller ID. Um, we have difficulty receiving incoming phone calls. Our uh, voicemail machines are, are the same machines that some folks may even still be using today. 20 years ago, you press the button on the machine. It's not digital. Um, and it is an upgrade that is much overdue. In order to have the telephone system upgrade, we have to upgrade the wire infrastructure. So you, we can't do one without the other. The antiqu antiquated switching for the infrastructure, most of the switching equipment used in the districts was deployed 15 years ago. So it's 15 years old. <clears throat> Modern replacement switches will bring access port speeds up to one gigabyte. This allows for a higher number of, of item of electronics to be used at the same time. Uh, it'll be a significant difference in our capabilities for our students to take MCAS tests um, and to perform every daily duties as we are up to now servicing about 3,400 devices in our district. The access point across the district will be, was installed about five years ago. So again, um, this serious digital learning impalements in regards to the, the lack of bandwidth that we have that is bottlenecking within our own system, within our own district. This will allow us to utilize all the bandwidth available to our district and it will also allow us once Verizon, as they increase it periodically, we will actually be able to future, this future proofs our internet infrastructure so we will also be able to take advantage of future bandwidth increases from Verizon. And that's basically the summarizes the Warren article. Are there questions on Article 9? Yes, ma'am. It's not so much. Yeah, I'm Jennifer Evans from Smith Street, Groton. Um, more, more than I'm being an old school curmudgeon about this. Like, this is something that's typically a springtown meeting thing. And you mentioned that you did a survey monkey survey to determine who, you know, what should be coming up and where. I guess my question is where was that survey done through? I never heard it, saw it, anything. And so like, you know, what subset of the town is answering your survey that says this belongs on a fall meeting? It was an electronic survey. So it was on Facebook socialized uh, through different periodical there. It was also on the listserv, and 150 people of the community responded, okay. and other people were also 
um, encouraged to email school committee members as well. So just there's as been, if I could finish, sorry, there's there's been a couple discussions at our school committee as well, um, requesting feedback, and not only from the survey, I reference that as one portion, um, but we've also received individual emails as well from individual taxpayers. All right, just as background. Mm -hmm. The listserv is not an official form of communication, and actually, because my politics, um, I actually had the nerve to defend people who voted for Donald Trump. I didn't defend Trump, I devoted people who voted for him. I got booted from the listserv a year ago, November, and, and so people like me aren't even allowed on the listserv. So using the listserv as a form of communications for the school committee and a source of a survey, I don't think is, is appropriate. Down front, yes, sir. Mr. Manugian. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mike Manugian, Pepperell Road. Um, it says in the write-up that this is scheduled to be done in fiscal 19. If the money is appropriated tonight, presumably you'd do it sooner than that? No, it will still be done in FY19. So we can appropriate the money in the spring in the, town in the meeting spring. and still we, be it, plenty of time? Yes. It, well, it, w it will not be appropriated at all until Dunstable passes their portion as well. As we know, someone has to go for first out of our two member towns. Okay, so there's no need to appropriate it tonight? No, other than basically accommodating uh, voters' requests, um, both through email and again through the different resources that they had to reach out to the community, to okay. school community members. Thank you. Are there other questions in the back? Yes, ma'am. I don't have a question. I do have a statement. The uh, board of direct, oh, Gail Chalmers, Pepper Road, and um, I'm also with the Groton Council on Aging. The board of directors on the Council on Aging fully understand the request brought forth to the town of Groton under Article 9. We, the people of Groton, are responsible to make available a safe and updated infrastructure for all Groton students and facility. They need to update the phone and internet system. It not only benefits our academic standards, it also is an essential tool for our police and fire department to use in an emergency situation. We unanimously support Article 9, and we urge you to do so. Are there other questions or comments under Article 9? It requires a majority vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. The ayes have it. Article 9 is passed by a majority vote. Article 10, Mr. Black. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate, transfer from available funds, and or borrow a sum or sums of money to be expended by the Board of Assessors to perform a cyclical reinspection program. Person uh, Mr. Black, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you're, you're reading from the warrant, which is uh, broader language than we need read in the motion. Could you read what's on the screen? Um, Do that, or what Mr. Pease has? So ladies and gentlemen, the Warren article is written more broadly, and then once the town figures out uh, the, the sources of the money and the exact amount of money, a more narrow motion is written, and that's what we're gonna have to ask Mr. Black to read tonight. Now that I have the narrow motion, <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, once again, I uh, move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $103,500 from the excess and deficiency fund, free cash, to be expended by the Board of Assessors to perform a cyclical reinspection program pursuant, pursuant to and as required by the, the directive issued by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue Bureau of Local Assessments. Article 10 has been moved and seconded, Mr. Black. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to uh, introduce to the audience our new principal assessor, Jonathan Greeno. Mr. Greeno. Good evening, everybody. Um, in, to make a long story short, in 2006-2007, uh, the town of Groton changed their um, CAMA system, which is um, our database for our assessing 
uh, in the office, and we changed from Patriot Division. Back in those days, um, what, what I should say, what's required now compared to then was if you change a camera system from one to another, you have to do full a full list uh, of the whole town. It wasn't required back then. However, when you do data transfer from one system to another, there is inherent issues that crop up. And the further away that you get from that, that time that you did the upgrade, the more difficulty you have of getting real uh, consistent and good data. So over the years, the, the uh, Department of Revenue uh, Bureau of Local Assessment has um, given us directives to do a full measure and list for the town, every residential property, which is approximately 4,000 in town. And um, the directives are getting stronger and stronger. So you get to a point where they'll do an unfunded mandate. They'll say, you need to do it now. So we're choosing to do it when it's right for us instead of them telling us to do it now. So that's the, uh, the gist of it. Are there questions or comments on Article 10? Requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Article 10 passes by a unanimous vote. Article 11. Mr. Cunningham for the Complete Streets Committee. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of $45,000 in the Excess and Deficiency Fund free cash to be expended by the town manager for the purpose of hiring an engineer for the design of traffic safety and pedestrian improvements funded by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Complete Streets Program. Article 11 has been moved and seconded, Mr. Cunningham. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. The Complete Streets Program is a program that's uh, administered through the uh, Massachusetts uh, uh, Department of Transportation, and uh, it allowed communities to apply for grants to improve pedestrian um, safety and also bicycle safety within their communities. Um, uh, we formed a committee. There was a committee that was formed uh, to look at the different uh, issues in town and to prioritize uh, the various uh, uh, areas in town that needed attention vis-a-vis -vis pedestrian safety, uh, pedestrian crossing, bicycle safety, and there was a list developed uh, that was uh, prioritized, submitted to Mass Department of uh, Transportation, and we were successful in obtaining a grant of uh, almost $340,000 to fund those improvements. Uh, but in order to do this, as with many other state programs or state grant projects like this, you need to pay for the engineering money up front. So this is what that engineering money would, uh, uh, you know, would accomplish, would pay for that. Uh, I, I know many people are interested in what is a complete street, so we can go into this a little bit. And it is one that provides safe and accessible options for all travel modes, walking, biking, transit, and ve vehicles for people of all ages uh, and abilities. Next slide, please. Well, the next slide will tell you that, uh, in fact, the master plan, which has been approved by town, includes a recommendation that the town implement a complete streets po policy, which requires design and upgrading of new and existing streets to accommodate a range of transportation modes and users of all ages and abilities. And uh, as, as a community in general, uh, I think people appreciate, Groton is, a, is certainly, it's, it's a large town, there, it's spread out, there are a lot of roads uh, that, that wind about. Uh, there are not, there, there's some sidewalk infrastructure, but it isn't great. Uh, we looked at ways of, of uh, improving that or extending the sidewalk infrastructure. Those are a lot of the comments that we held or heard when we held our public hearings. And we also looked, uh, uh, in fact, number one, I think, on our list was the uh, Route uh, 119 Main Street in town and the, just the crossing, the pedestrian crossing, uh, which is, you know, complicated at best and certainly during uh, you know, commuting hours and prime traffic hours, it's, you take your life in your hands sometimes crossing the street. So one of the things that will be funded by this, uh, they're going to be uh, six crossings, is, is that right, Michelle, six or eight? Yeah, okay, Michelle will talk about it a little bit further, but they're, they're going to be, uh, the pedestrian crossings that are there now are going to be signalized in the way that the ones are up by Lawrence Academy, where there'll be crossings, there'll be uh, lights that flash, there'll be a sensor that detects a person's waiting to cross, the lights will flash, uh, basically you know, telling traffic to stop and to yield to the pedestrians in the crosswalk. 
the Board of Selectmen adopted the Complete Street Policy in July 11, 2016, and uh, our committee was an, was an offshoot of that. And um, we, again, the committee was formed. We completed a uh, process. We held hearings. We got a lot of input from people about, uh, you know, what their concerns were and, and what their, um, you know, real uh, issues were in certain areas of town in terms of, of access and, and safe walking and biking. Um, we submitted an application for funding in May of 2017, and, and again, we were awarded that grant uh, in July of 2017 of uh, almost $340,000. And uh, certainly the work of the committee was, I think, instrumental, and, and we uh, were very appreciative of the work that they provided in their volunteer time. So with that, I'll turn it over to Michelle. Ms. Collette. Um, as Peter Cunningham mentioned, next slide, please. Uh, there are four projects that are funded for FY 2018. This is a five-year program, and we have to reapply for funding every year. So this is the, the four projects that the committee felt were most important. Uh, the first project is the Main Street Traffic Calming, which um, you'll see on the map includes the installation of six crosswalks in the location where there are existing crosswalks walks with six sets of flashing lights on Main Street and Groton Center. Uh, the locations of the crosswalks are uh, at, El at the intersection of Elm Street and Main Street, at uh, Philo's uh, across from um, Donnellan's uh, at the intersection of Court Hollis Street and Main Street uh, at uh, Station Avenue in front of the Town Hall and the Historical Society at the Prescott School and at the Groton Inn. Um, the other project is an extension of the Long Hill Road sidewalk. Um, construction of the sidewalk will go from River Bend Drive to Groton Place and will connect with the trail in Groton Place. And there will be uh, a flashing light uh, installed at the crosswalk going over 225, and there will also be four ADA ramps installed in that location. Uh, and if I fail to mention it, the Main Street traffic uh, calming includes installation of 32 ADA compliant ramps, uh, which transition from the sidewalk to the crosswalk, and those include the uh, detectable um, rectangular squares so that people who have visual problems can cross more safely. The third project is the uh, speed limit signage, which is the installation of six flashing solar speed limit signs in locations to be, be determined by the police chief and the DPW director. And last but not least is two bicycle repair kits that will be installed on the Nasher River Rail Trail um, at the kiosk at Station Avenue and at the kiosk near Sand Hill Road. And uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. There are questions or comments on Article 11. Uh, Camilla, Camilla Blackman, corner of Elm and Main. I'm delighted to hear there's going to be a flashing light there. I wondered if there would be any change in the speed limit on Main Street. Ms. Collette. I think that that's an issue that you um, would have to speak to the Board of Selectmen and the Chief of Police about, but I certainly appreciate um, your observation and would um, agree with you. Yes, sir. Uh, Richard Hewitt, Longley Road. A couple of questions. Um, there's changes coming to town with the Inn and Indian Hill. Have you anticipated that? Has that been taken into consideration, uh, the tr changes in traffic, both foot and, and uh, bike and uh, car traffic, that might, how that might be, affect your plans? Mr. Well, yeah, we, I, we've already, I mean, you're regardless of what's taking place in terms of the Inn or Indian Hill, we already have realized a significant increase in terms of traffic and traffic counts have, have been going up. And, and anecdotally, anybody that uh, is out and about on the different roads in town, I think, is, is well aware of that. So. Uh, indeed, this is something I think that we're aware of. We certainly are, are, are mindful of it, and having some control over particularly pedestrian crossings, making them safer, uh, is going to be a uh, certainly a win-win, I think, for, for people in town. 
Well, I, I just was thinking specifically when Indian Hill opens up, there may be people that want to walk there, or stu students from some of the schools want to walk there, so there may be some increased foot traffic in that uh, area. Right. We'll Ms. Glenn. In fact, our application for FY 2019 will include certain improvements to the rail trail uh, that will help people get on and off the rail trail from other locations in the town center, such as Pleasant Street and West Street, uh, because the natural um, pathway to Indian Hill would be through um, the, the National River Rail Trail and we would be encouraging people to use that as a pedestrian and bicycle access. Okay, the second uh, point was um, 119 and the rail trail, if you could think about some access between the rail trail and the, the main street in town, that's a very difficult place right there. And related to that, uh, it seems to me it would be a good idea to think about having a rail trail or some kind of connection to the school so that students could use the rail trail to get to the middle school and the elementary school and actually access that rather than having to go on the street. Yes, thank you. The, uh, those projects are on the list for future years. In the back, yes ma'am. Jane Allen, Shattuck Street. Um, if I understand you correctly, you've got $300,000 and we have to spend 45 thousand to get that three hundred thousand and this is a five-year project do you see this three hundred thousand dollars as a one-year part of it or the entire five years the three hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars is to fund the projects for FY 2018 in the back is ma'am uh, Carol Perkins from the Planning Board um, at a regular meeting on October 12th, the planning board voted unanimously to recommend the approval of this Warren article for the Complete Streets Committee. Yes, ma'am, in the back. Ann Krajewski from Fairview Avenue in Groton. Um, I have a question uh, regarding the, the, cross, the lights at the crosswalks. Um, is there any more wiggle room to add a couple of more spots for f on the flashing lights uh, at the crosswalks. There are two other spots specifically that I'm talking about. One is at the end of Fairview Avenue where I live. It's uh, right across from Workers' Credit Union. Um, I wondered if that, that's such a blind spot. I wondered if that, um, their flashing lights would be put there as well. And also across the street from, I mean right at um, Florence Roach in the middle school, there's a crosswalk there, but there's no um, light there, is, other than the, a policeman at one point, there's no other way to get across safely. And uh, the committee would wholeheartedly agree with you, uh, but that section of Route 119 is under the control of Mass DOT, and the program is not eligible for improvements on any road that is under the control of Mass DOT. It's only for uh, roads and sidewalks and improvements for roads that are under local control. So that would have to be um, implemented through mass DOT, but I think your point is very well taken. Is that something that, that um, uh, the selectmen can um, push, help um, advocate? Uh, yes, it is. In fact, the selectmen have been pushing actually for, for some time with mass DOT to complete the sidewalk from the intersection of Old Air mm -hmm. Road, Main Street, down to the CBS Pharmacy, and that's, that's sort of been a long-suffering process to try to do that. Uh, but I believe that's something that like one would would uh, would be supportive of. Thank you. There are other questions and comments on Article 11. It requires a majority vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Article 11 passes by a unanimous vote. Article 12, Mrs. Pine. I move, I move that the town vote to transfer the sum of zero dollars from the excess and deficiency fund, free cash, for the purpose of affecting the tax rate for the period beginning July 1st, 2017. Article 12 has been moved and seconded. Ms. Pine. I move that Article 12 be indefinitely postponed. A motion to indefinitely postpone Article 12 has been moved and seconded. The motion does not suppress debate. Ms. Pine. So I just want to explain, um, in the warrant it says accurately that we had voted to 
transfer $100,000 to affect the tax rate. But since that was printed, we had several things come in that um, required us to spend more money than we were expecting. There was that unpaid disputed bill for about $16,000. There was a slight addition I, to the cost of the Senior Center architectural drawings. We'd originally thought that would be 400,000, it went to 450. And then the cyclical inspections for the assessors, we were originally planning to do over a five year period and pay only $20,000 this year. Then we realized, uh, we asked for a bid for the entire project to be done all at once and decided that that was uh, a smarter thing to do. So that's uh, why we ended up not wanting to transfer any more money out of free cash at this point. Are there questions on Article 12? You have before you a motion to indefinitely postpone the main motion under Article 12. If you vote to indefinitely postpone the main motion, we'll move on to Article 13. If you vote against indefinite postponement, we'll continue debating and then vote on the main motion under Article 12. All those in favor of the motion to indefinitely postpone, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion to indefinitely postpone passes by a majority vote. Article 13, Mr. Hirsch. I move that the town of vote to transfer to the Board of Selectmen for the purpose of sale and or lease, custody and control of the buildings formerly known as the Groton Electric Garages, which comprise approximately 6,300 square feet and all on the 1.8 acre, 1 .08 1 .08 acre, acre, acre site on which they are located at 23 Station Avenue. Groton, Massachusetts, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to sell and or lease for a period not to exceed 99 years said property and to take all necessary action to comply with the general laws of the Commonwealth for the disposal of said buildings and to petition the general court for any necessary special legislation. Article 13 has been moved and seconded. Uh, Mr. Hurst, do you want to say anything further or should we turn over to Mr. Kelly? I think Mr. If the, the, the group will recognize Mr. Kelly. He can uh, do a little more better explanation than I, right? Yes, present. Mr. Kelly, it's the general uh, manager of the Groton Electrical Light Department. Okay. Geld moved into our new office and garage facilities in the spring of 2016. And then we put out a request for proposals on this portion to be declared surplus, in no, um, and that was due November 17th of 2016. We received one proposal that wasn't accepted by the Geld Board. So then we put out a second RFP with the um, responses due back September 20th of this year. And again, we received one proposal, but this proposal was accepted by the Geld Board as satisfactory. So that's why we're here tonight. Can you put on the uh, parcel? So <clears throat> this is the parcel, it's the location of our former garages. And so this warrant article, if it passes, so that pending the completion of successful negotiations for a purchase and sale agreement with the McElroy family, the Geld ratepayers could recoup $250,000 by releasing the property that is no longer necessary for light department operations. And in the proposal that we received, do you want to talk about your pictures? There, uh, there's, a, so there's some potential plan. These are potential pictures of what it would look like. So, so I'd like to address you uh, this evening. My name is Andrew McElroy. I grew up on Mayfield Drive. Uh, my folks live there presently, and I live on Willowdale. Uh, three years ago, my folks responded to a request for proposal for the old fire station, the one on Station Ave. And for the past three years, we've been rehabilitating that into a restaurant and that will open, we, we expect, in mid-January and we hope you all join us when that opens. And we're responding today to another request for proposal also on Station Ave in the Town Center Overlay District. And so this is the, sometimes people refer to it as the old Geld building. This is the one that's 
uh, a cylinder, uh, cinder block building that fronts the rail trail. And what we put together for you are some of the, uh, some renderings of what we could do with that building. Now the most immediate uh, uh, use for the building would be to accommodate uh, parking and also uh, traffic flow and those kinds of issues. But there, are, we want to make you alive to some other uh, potential for those buildings, and you can see them here. So, so I think we've got about four different renderings that we show up here, and this is one of them. And you can see here that what we've done is we've introduced a brick facade on the building. One idea there was that it, it harmonizes that building with the others architecturally on Station Ave, because the old fire station, of course, has a brick facade. Same with the town hall. Uh, also, we put in there, uh, maybe you can't see it as well in, in this rendering, but uh, some electric vehicle charging stations. We thought that paired well thematically with uh, the Groton Electric Light Department and the overall Go Green initiative, so we thought that was something that was, uh, would fit there very well. And you can also see just kind of cleaning the area up a little bit. So the area that fronts the, the rail trail is a nice area, but it could benefit a little bit from, I mean, you could imagine some, some plantings around there or whatever else. So these are some ideas that we had. This is kind of a broader vision of what's possible for that, for that area, and we wanted to share that. Now, of course, this evening, before you, was a much narrower question, which is whether or not to authorize the Groton Electric Light Department to enter into a purchase and sale agreement. But we wanted to share this vision, which is kind of a, you know, a few years down the road kind of a vision, and solicit any, uh, any thoughts. Thanks. Sure, if there are any others, Don, go ahead and throw them up. So you can see some small retail that's in there. So, so, so the question was, can you show where the rail trail is in Broad Meadow? So as you look at it from here, um, some of the context isn't quite there, but you can see that there's a rail trail and it's depicted it's depicted by that trail that's uh, at the upper right-hand corner of, uh, of your screen as you look at it. And so extending up toward the top left-hand corner of the screen is where you would, uh, uh, that kind of pass-through that exists now that leads toward uh, Broad Meadow Road. And of course, heading in the opposite direction, uh, is where Station Ave comes out. So for those of you familiar with Station Ave, it, it, there's a T intersection at Main Street, and it extends down toward the rail trail, and then kind of loops over to the right, and some point in that path becomes Court Street. And this is a view from uh, Station Ave as you are looking at the building, and on the right-hand side, but you can't see it, is where the rail trail, is the rail tra where the rail trail passes past the building. And I think that's I think that's all the renderings. Is there anything else, gentlemen? No. Let's open it up there. for questions. Are there questions or comments? Just in the back. Uh, Michelle Collette, Windmill Hill, uh, and I am speaking as, uh, as an individual, but as the former um, town planner, uh, to commend you on your uh, renderings, on your application. As everyone knows, the Station Avenue design guidelines were um, written and adopted in 2008. It has been nearly 10 years, and it is really heartwarming to see implementation of those guidelines, thanks to Geld, uh, thanks to Dan and Lori, and uh, Andrew's family. And this project uh, is in perfect keeping with what was envisioned for Station Avenue. So thank you to you and your family. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Mr. Hewitt? Yes, I think this is a great idea. I, I really do support it. But I do have a question. I'm really confused. We came back about a year ago here, and the Senior Center Committee 
dismiss this site as well as the Prescott site on the basis that they were so environmentally compromised that it would be so expensive that it really wasn't an option. Now we're being told that suddenly the same site is commercially viable. That seems a little confusing. There are other questions or comments? I, if, if someone wishes to answer the question, the chair will recognize them, but I, I can call on someone to speak. I can't force them to. Mr. Uh, Hirsch. Yes, uh, I'll try to answer the question. Uh, the major difference between the senior center approach and uh, Mr. McElroy's approach is that the senior center, I believe, would have torn it all down and started totally new construction, whereas this is a remake of the existing building. and. Uh, um, would not uh, endanger the environment there. Mr. Cunningham, did you want to speak? Yeah, to yeah I would also add, I think, in terms of the needs assessment that was done for the senior center, the, the needs and what was required for the senior center is, is somewhat different than what they're looking at here in, in moving forward with a uh, you know, commercial application. So there, there's certainly two different sets of needs. Mr. Lyman. Yes, this, uh, this site is, I believe, 1.08 acres, did I hear? That's correct. And the senior center is going to need more than that. Um, I don't know that there's more land in there that's available. This thing, by the looks of it, is not going to impact the wetlands that are there. Uh, the senior center would definitely impact the wetlands. Yeah, so I. Uh I'm not totally familiar with all the analysis that went into the senior center. What I can say is that what's anticipated here is simply putting a facade onto these buildings. So there's no enlargement from the current footprint and no, uh, no other expansion. Are there other questions or comments under Article 13? It requires a two-thirds majority. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Article 13 passes by a unanimous vote. Article 14, Mr. Pease. I move that the town vote to accept the provisions of Chapter 44, Section 53F and a half, an act authorizing cities and towns to establish enterprise funds for the purpose of establishing an enterprise fund for the Four Corners Sewer District to be effective January 1st, 2018. Article 14 has been moved and seconded, Mr. Pease. This uh, authorizes the establishment of the enterprise fund for the sewer district that was authorized at a previous town meeting. Are there any questions or comments under Article 14? Yes, sir. Sorry, maybe I'm confused, but what are we going to do with those funds? We're authorizing the funds. How are you going to spend the money? Mr. Pease? We are authorizing with this article the establishment of an enterprise fund. Yes, but The what next article allows us to transfer money into that fund. Those funds are used to pay for the servicing of the sewage and transfer to uh, AIR and the other things involved in treating sewage. Okay, thank you. And, and they're paid by the users. Any other questions or comments? Requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Article 14 passes by a majority vote. Article 15, Mr. Pease. I move that the town vote the following operating budget for fiscal year 2018 for the Four Corners Sewer District Enterprise Fund with the funding to come from donation revenues which have been received by the town in support of the Four Corners Sewer Project. Uh, the, the line item is expenses. The amount is $13,230. Article 15 has been moved and seconded, Mr. Pease. So this moves funds into that fund that we just approved so that they can then be expended in service of that sewer district. Are there are questions or comments under Article 15. Requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? 
The ayes have it. Article 15 passes by unanimous vote. Article 16, Mr. Eason. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Before I make the motion, I would like to take a minute to make an announcement. Is Go that ahead. right? Uh, the Community Preservation Committee is in the process of receiving uh, preliminary applications for the FY19 uh, uh, funding cycle by Thursday. Uh, if you submit a two-page uh, project summary form, the Community Preservation Committee will take a look at that uh, and give you some guidance on filling out the full-blown application. Uh, and if you have some good ideas, we'd like to have those received. Um, and you'll have until perhaps uh, late March to do the full-blown application. If you have any interest, um, please call the Community Preservation uh, Committee's administrator at 448-12, excuse me, 448-1120, or I'll be here after the meeting if you want to step forward. I could provide some guidance there. I move that the town vote to amend Chapter 10, Community Preservation Committee, of the code of the town of Groton by deleting paragraph B of section 10-1 in its entirety and replacing it with a new paragraph B as set forth in the warrant for the 2017 fall town meeting. Article 16 has been moved and seconded. Mr. Eason. The um, town meeting created the Community Preservation Committee back in October 2004 and at that time uh, we established uh, that there would be three-year staggered terms for the members of the Community Preservation Committee, and that has served us well. Uh, but recently, the Planning Board and the Park Commission have indicated that for their convenience, having a one-year term uh, instead of the three-year term would be more consistent with the way they make their appointments to the committees that their members serve on. So uh, the Community Preservation Committee agreed that that would be okay, uh, but in order to make that happen, we have to come back to town meeting because the terms of those um, appointees are set forth uh, from the town meeting vote. So we're here to make that change. Are there questions or con comments under Article 16? Requires a majority vote. All those in favor of the main motion under Article 16 signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Passes by unanimous vote. Article 16 passes by unanimous vote. Article 17, Ms. Pine. I move that the town vote to amend the code of the town of Groton by adding a new chapter 181 entitled Anti-Litter slash Snow in Public Ways as set forth in the warrant for the 2017 fall town meeting. Article 17 has been moved and seconded. You'll find uh, the language on page 11 in your warrant, Ms. Pine. This is essentially, uh, mostly I think, having to do with plowing snow into the street, but uh, I would ask our highway supervisor Tom, supervisor, Tom Delaney, to speak to this. Mr. Delaney. Thank you, thank you Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Becky. It is, the main gist of this is an issue, an ongoing issue we've had for years and years and years with, uh, there's some contractors who are snow plowers who think that after we get our job done and get your roads nice and clean and black, that they can put everything right back in the middle of the street and then you have to pay us to go back and clean it all up again. Well, this is the same, the exact same bylaw that the town of Dunstable enacted and they've had real good luck with it the last two years. It's not going out to slam these guys the first time they go out and do something. It's to say, hey, you know, we have the teeth to enforce this now besides bringing you to court for obstruction of a public way. Nice little civil fine with, with their own little ticket books that the, they can pay right in the town hall. And it's a lot of it's peace of mind to the guys who are working all night long. Whenever they, they work all night, they get your roads clean, and then we have to go back and clean it up. And it's like, there's nothing we can do about it when we yell at these people to, to uh, to clean their mess up and they just continue to do it and do it. So I'd ask you to support this for, uh, for the snow part of it. And the second part is also the litter. We've had a huge influx of people dumping their bags on the side of the roads. Uh, fortunately, a lot of times we can open the bags up, find the names, 
now we also have teeth to uh, to take care of that as well. Thank you. Uh, prior to the meeting, uh, Mr. Brooks Lyman approached the chair uh, and was asked to make a motion to amend. Mr. Lyman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. And if I could make some comments or ask some questions um, <clears throat> as well before I do the amendment. It's a reminder you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, my concern is with section 181-1, disposal of refuse, and I have no problem for the most part. However, those of us who live along uh, well-traveled roads, and I live on Townsend Road, um, have discovered that if we have a piece of equipment or furniture or whatever that we no longer want, that we can put it out on the side of the road and that within a day or so it disappears. Um, I don't think that's magic. Somebody came by and said they could use it and took it. Or perhaps they said they, that if it's metal they can use it to sell it for scrap. So, I wouldn't want this um, little option to go away, and if I put something out expecting it to disappear in a day or three, that in fact I have a fine from the police for doing so. And I realize that most of the things mentioned here are real litter, but the last item is household items, and that's my concern here. Um, while I have the microphone, I will go to the amendment. I would like to amend that section of the law, of the new bylaw, to read $100 instead of $300 for the fine. It seems to me that while $100 for blocking the highway, if that's sufficient and that's a safety issue, that $300 for somebody throwing a McDonald's bag on the side of the road which isn't a safety issue, at least not in my book, uh, seems a little high. So I'd like to amend that to $100. So Mr. Lyman, the uh, motion you handed to me prior to the meeting reads, I move to amend the main motion under Article 17 by striking the words 300 in Section 181-1 and by substituting the words 100. Is that correct? That is correct. Is there a second? Without a second, the motion to amend has been moved and seconded. Did you have any further comments, Mr. Lyman? No, I think I've made them. Uh, I'd be curious to hear something from, it looks like, Tom Delaney about the uh, other aspect of the issue. Mr. Delaney. Well, Brooks, you are, you're absolutely right about the items that was put on there, that word was added on there. Is the intersections of cul-de-sacs and side roads are turning into free spots. And whenever you have a couch that sits out there and it gets rained on, it's going to sit there. So there needs to be some teeth to make this happen. And we're not going to start picking up stuff that's dropped on the side of the road for free or there's going to be stuff everywhere in town. When we know there's a yard sale and stuff, if I see stuff on the side of the road and it stays there, it goes back in the yard it, from the end of the street. I'll drag it back up the street. I'll take pictures of stuff on the side of the road if it's there too long. And if I find it somewhere else, they'll be getting a phone call from the police. Uh, so we, we track and we watch the stuff that gets dropped on the side of the road if it's sitting out in somebody's house too long. And I mean, we get a lot of phone calls from people say, you know, my neighbors had a cathode ray tube TV on the side of the road for three weeks in front of his yard. Can you guys do anything about that? Well, now we could, but before we couldn't. Agreed. May I? Yes, Mr. Lyman, go ahead. Thank you. Um, 
I agree with that. And personally, I, if the stuff doesn't go, then I take it to the dump. But uh, I grant you that there are problems. If the enforcement is, shall we say, lenient, where three, four days, whatever, before anything happens, that would be fine. But if, if somebody drives by and the next day, you know, you get a call from the police, that's pushing it a bit, I think. Thank you. In the back, yes, sir, Mr. Funch. Yeah, Paul Funch, Reedy Meadow Road. Um, I am totally in support of uh, all of this motion um, and would observe that it is, seems to be becoming more of a problem recently in our neck of the woods, so uh, I'd like to see some enforcement. Uh, my, my concern is whether there's a loophole in the code, and I just sort of ask for legal opinion on it. If you say disposal of these items on a public or private way, whether if it lands off the, private, the, the um, public way, you know, whether that's uh, prohibited or not. It seems like, you know, because I know a lot of stuff gets thrown into rich state forest, and that's the state's property, not the, not the right of way. Uh, Mr. Daneski, Town Council. Mr. Moderator, as worded, the bylaw would relate to disposal on a public or private way. It doesn't speak to private property per se, and there would be private civil uh, law governing that trespass for one. Uh, if there is knowledge that the disposal occurred on a way and somehow the property then by wind or other uh, action migrated to other property, uh, that would still, in my opinion, uh, be the basis for enforcement under this language. In the back, yes, sir. Uh, Russell Burke, 324 Old Air Road. Uh, having participated in the spring cleanup uh, for many years, cleaning up uh, sections of my street and looking at the annual accumulation of litter that accumulates, I'm entirely in support of this article as it's currently written. I think to reduce the, the fine is not warranted. I, in fact, I, I think the the fine could be even more if, if it was allowed by, by law, but I think this is something that needs to be enacted, um, and I understand the predicament that Tom and his crews find during the winter where they find snow that's been plowed all of a sudden re reappears. So I, I recommend approval of the article as originally drafted. Thank you. Yes, sir, in the back. You go ahead. Yep. Good. Uh, Steve Palmer, Boston Road. Right. So uh, my concern regards when I have a private plow person come and plow out my driveway, which is then subsequently blocked by the town, plowing the snow in front of my driveway. And I don't know if I have any opportunity to complain about that. Mr. Delaney. Well, believe me, that's probably one of the most complaints we do get is when somebody, <laughs> when somebody plows after we're done, and the you know, the, well, the contractors are done, and then we finish up, and then the snow's at the end. The best thing I can do is to advise you, tell, have your contractor say, you know, you guys got to keep an eye open when the town's done. You guys got to come back and finish cleaning the end of this driveway up. I mean, it's. But then we pay twice. Well. I, I don't know what I can say about that. The town, that's why the town has the right of way off the edge of the road, is that's to be able to push the snow onto it. The, the timing of the co private contractor and when we finish our job, and now the t or, in, or vice versa, you know, the, the contractors are out there as soon as the snow stops. As soon as the snow stops, we have probably another six to seven hours to go after that last snowflake hits, hits the storm, yeah, hits the ground. So that's, that's when the contractors go to work so they can go home and go to bed. They've been sleeping all night. We've been working all night. So they're, they're going to they're gonna clean those off right away. We're still, we're still only halfway done our job. So we can't time it that way to, to, so that all the driveways are open in the end. That's up to the contractors and the homeowners. I know it's, it's frustrating, um, but that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the fact of the snow. I don't, ha I don't have any other explanation for that. In the back, yes, ma'am, Ms. Perkins. 
Uh, Carolyn Perkins, Reedy Meadows, speaking as a private citizen. Um, are we going to, I, I totally agree with this, and I think the trash buildup in particular uh, has been um, more and more difficult every year. Will there be signs posted as part of this that let people know that there is a, a $300 fine? Because that, that is very motivating for people often not to dump their trash, and I'm hoping that will be part of what we're doing here. Yeah, Mr. we will. We'll, we'll, put, we'll put some signs around at probably some of the major entrances of town to let people know that we have this, this bylaw and reference the bylaw. Yes, sir, in the back. Uh, Mike Weinberg, 23 Old Air Road. Every once in a while I have a yard sale. Every once in a while I replace furniture and I put things on the yard, put a free sign up, and if it's not gone in a day or two, I take it to the dump. Is there any way in this, which I, I agree with this law 100%, is there any way that, that a homeowner can get a warning so they get it off the street and take it to the dump? Because people take my stuff, so it's good for everybody. Mr. Delaney. Oh, I understand that. We're not, it's, we're not going to be the trash police. You know, like I said, stuff will, the main focus on those are the ones that are going to be left on intersections, um, at the end of roads and cul-de-sacs and stuff like that, not stuff that's in somebody's front yard or in their yard. If it's right in your yard, you know, we're, it's, there's going to be a lot of leeway. We're not going to, I'm not going to have somebody who's going to go walk around and, and as soon as we see something start issuing tickets. No, we're, that's, that's not the intent of this at all. That, that's terrific, but if someone does leave something there for an extended period of time, it would be nice to, to make them move it, though. There probably would be a warning ahead of time, yes. Are there other questions or comments under Article 17? You have before you first a motion to amend. A motion to amend requires a majority votes. The motion is to strike the words 300 in section 181.1 and substitute the words 100. Requires a majority votes. The vote in favor. The bylaw will be changed, or the wording will be changed to 100, and the fine would be reduced. If you vote against, it will remain at 300. All those in favor of the motion to amend, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. The no's have it. The motion to amend fails. Now we come to the main motion on Article 17. Any further questions or comments? Requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Article 17 passes by a majority vote. Article 18, Ms. Pine. I move that the town vote to accept as a public way the roadway known as Chamberlain's Mill Lane as heretofore laid out by the Board of Selectmen and as shown as a plan entitled As Built Plan Chamberlain's Mill, Groton, Mass. Prepared for the Regulus Realty Trust, P.O. Box 381, Groton, Mass. Dated June 1, 2017. <coughs> prepared by Ducharme and Dillis, Bolton, Mass., a copy of which is on file with the town clerk, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by gift, purchase, or eminent domain the fee to or lesser interests in said roadway and all related easements. Article 18 has been moved and seconded. Mrs. Pine. This is a standard road acceptance. They've met all of the conditions. For the Planning Board, Mr. Geiger. Uh, good evening. At a regular meeting on August 31st, 2017, the Planning Board voted unanimously to recommend that the Board of Selectmen accept Chamberlain's Mill Lane as a public way. Are there questions or comments on Article 18? Requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? <clears throat> The ayes have it. Article 18 passes by a unanimous vote. Um, Mr. Petropoulos, we're going to actually have Mr. Palmer read this, uh, make this motion. Mr. Palmer, please. Stephen Palmer, Boston Road. I move that the town vote to amend the zoning map established under Chapter 218 of the Code of the Town of Groton as set forth in the warrant for the 2017 
fall town meeting. Article 19 has been moved and seconded. Mr. Palmer. I move that Article 19 be indefinitely postponed. There's been a motion has been made and seconded to indefinitely postpone Article 19. It does not suppress debate. Mr. Palmer. The intent of this was to pursue uh, the establishment of an independent movie theater in the Sacred Heart Church, one that would play indef independent films and foreign films, also to be available for um, free enterprise STEM education purposes as part of that. Um, there were three things that I was doing in parallel to secure the movie theater. One was to secure uh, capital. Second one was to was to secure the change in zoning, and then finally to beat another party to an offer on the property. Um, a person came in front of me and secured the property, so as a result, this citizen's petition is now being postponed. Any questions? Are there any questions on Article 19? If you vote to indefinitely postpone, we'll move to uh, dissolve the meeting. If you vote against indefinite postponement, we will vote on Article 19. Motion to indefinitely postpone requires a majority vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Article 19 is indefinitely postponed by a unanimous vote. Chair would now entertain a motion to dissolve the 2017 Fall Town meeting. It has been moved and seconded to dissolve the 2017 Fall Town Meeting. Requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. This meeting is now dissolved.